Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video, here to talk about the Akihabara Explosion event that's going to be upcoming. Now that I have the slightest bit of time before work gets me insanely busy again. <laughs> so let's go right into it. So this is the current pre-release campaign that we have for it. Uh, there's also the class-based summoning campaign that's also kind of going on here as Caldea Boy is just... This close to ending. This is close to... Um... This is also pretty close to ending. Uh, the, the actual event is over, but you can still summon for Voyager in his good boy smile if you want. Oops, my bad. I didn't even realize I wasn't showing Voyager. There you go. And the class-based summoning, which I think someone did the numbers and showed me. Like, if you actually are looking for a very specific class limited three-star, this is actually your best bet. <laughs> so if you're going for a three-star story-locked or limited class unit, I think this is your best shot of doing it. So any Akihabara Explosion. So specifically, the pre-event is pretty simple because it's not anything. It's literally like, hey, log in a whole bunch. And then we also got some limited time campaigns going on at the same time. Uh, I just realized, why is this like that? It's because I, the last time I moved it, I did something dumb. There we go. That might be a little bit better. Sure, let's go with it. That makes a little bit more sense. But yeah, in terms of the actual event, we can go right here, because of course, JP version of the game. Okay, how about explosion? There we go. And then we can go... It is just not 100% perfect with me, which is really bugging me. But anyway. Um, the event summary itself, in order to actually participate in it, you had to have cleared Fuyuki. Um, the unit that is inside of it, which is very weird for me to say it that way, but the unit that is in it, <laughs> that is the featured, is Galatea, who is not limited, and then the other raid up servants are Bride Nero and, uh, Okibihime. Hime. So, we'll go over the big five star right here, which is Galatea, who is a free, not a free, that's a, not a right way of saying it, but she is an always in banner berserker, so she's not limited in any case. So if you're, in theory, if you're someone who's a big fan of Galatea and you just don't have the funds currently to summon it, eventually when they do release a five star free ticket, she can be one of your choices if this, some, if this is someone you badly want, which I always say, if that's someone you badly want, always go for them. But yeah, this is Galatea. Uh, first skill is Pygmalion's Affection EX. Increase own arts performance for three turns. Increase own buster performance for three turns. Increase his own buff removal resistance for one time three turns. Charges on MP gauge by 20%. 30% arts, 30% buster, 100% buff removal resistance. Second skill, Maiden of Sculpture A. Grant self gut status for one time three turns. Stackable with other guts. Increase his own defense for two times three turns. Uh, 3,000 guts. 100% up in defense, which is pretty nice. Not bad. Uh, I like stacking guts, but the best form of guts is the one that never goes away and can stack at the same time. Aphrodite's Grace, which will later be turned into Aphrodite's Grace EX, uh, which we'll look at this one right here. Grants itself regeneration buff for three turns, increases, recovers party's HP every turn for three turns. Removes party's uh, debuffs every turn for three turns. Grants on self-attack activation buff for three turns. Charges on MP gauge when... Normal attacking with Buster cards. That's 10% NP when getting hit with Buster card. When the changes between here, the version that we're going to have in NA, is basically all this right here gone. It's just this. A very bare bones skill. And the cooldown is 7 turns, and that doesn't change from when it goes here. Her passive skills are Madness Enhancement EX, which is an increase of Buster performance by 12%, and Magic Resistance B. Her pen skill for the third skill is an anti-assassin critical attack chance resistance, which is a lot of words, which is an increase of own critical attack chance resistance against assassins. Her noble phantasm is an arts, which is a nine hit uh, arts NP for a single target. And it deals damage to one enemy and then it reduces their NP gauge by one turn, by one, and then increase of NP damage for three turns, which is pretty nice. And yeah, that's Galatea. Here's the big problem with Galatea. Uh, one, she is a Berserker. That hurts. The reason it hurts is that Berserkers have the worst NP gain of any class, I think. Um, they're the hardest to get NP with, that's for sure. And she's a, a unit who is arts with a Buster Gorilla <laughs> subset. She is three Buster, one arts, one quick. 
That's not good. <laughs> There's a lot of... I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's not the greatest looking kit in the world. It, even though these are some fantastic pants that she's got on at the moment. Um... Yeah, just not... And the, the the other bigger problem is that, you know, you could say, oh, she's fulfilling a very specific niche, but then Vlad gets a buff pretty soon that just makes him a better ch choice than her for a lot of, like, reasons. It's tough. The, the, it is nice that they at least gave it a 9 hit, so when you give it 9 hits, that does help. Again, the more hits on uh, an MP is good if you're one that's specifically going for NP gain, because the more hits on it means more chances of MP gaining, because she is a Berserker with no way of gaining more NP for what she does. Um, like, literal NP gain, she does get NP charge, which is nice, but it's not enough. Um, and she's single target. Really, again, a unit that you only really want if you're just super into Galatea. If you just love the story of Galatea, you're in love with her giant pants. You just want to go for her. And I don't, I don't blame you. She's a very attractive servant, for sure. But I don't know. There's just a, for In my mind, with so much on the horizon here, there's just no reason to summon for this character. Unless you're just deeply into her. That's my only, like... If you're someone who's deeply into her, you know, go with God, follow your heart, live your truth, and I wish you the best of luck as always. But for anyone else who's just like, I don't know, I'm, I'm cold-hearted and I want to know the cold hard facts, here's the cold hard facts. You can just skip this banner, straight up. That's it. And let's see, what other stuff? Honestly, the better units on here is probably actually Bright Nero, who is a, I really like her for a, as a support unit for... She's a support for arts that can also just straight up merc fools with arts. She's just bad at looping. Um, because she only hits tw twice, <laughs> so it's not enough time to actually gain NP. But anyway, let's look at the CEs. We have City Where the Dreams Are Born, which is ignore defense buffs and then arts and buster up by 8%. Junk Shop, NP plus 3% per turn, buster up 3%, NP damage 10%. And then Yummy, question mark, just like the new Bedman. Uh, Buster's up 3%, start of NP is 10%, and when equipped on a Servant of Rarity 1 to 3 and Kiri Mashu, damage 30% up. Oh, that's right, because of the way that this event is structured. I was like, that's that's a weird, but that's only for this event. So yeah, these CEs, other than helping with the event, ain't the greatest thing in the world. Not the best. Um, yeah, we're gonna get a Servant Strengthening for Bright Nero, which is always nice. This is the pre-release campaign, obviously. The, was there a summoning campaign? Yeah, this is the, the Glass Banner. But, yeah, and then the actual event itself, if you're curious, it's a tower quest, which is basically, like, a lot of ways to just try... This is an event that really takes... If you are someone who's been awakening a lot of their dudes, this event is great because you get to basically use every single servant uh, in the game, and you can make some really funky teams. Or maybe you could just solo everything with one single dude and just make your way up top. It's really up to you how you make your way up the tower. Um, I'm someone who likes to do a combination of three really weird units that have no business being together and then also just doing solo runs with one dude when I think like they can handle it themselves. So I like these tower style events. They're, they know how to bring them back because they're not here all the time. It's a big climb. So start this quest as soon as you can because the final tower here is a lot. It's a, it is a lot of, a lot of things to climb. This is not an event that you can just kind of start late into the game. You have to start this immediately, as soon as you can, so you can climb all this. And it's like two, it looks like it's 200 floors. Yeah, that, that's crazy. And the way it unlocks, I think, is that the, um, does it start with all of it? I don't remember, actually. Yeah. Also, apparently enemies equivalent to be found in the final singularity will appear in this event. So be, be ready. So yeah, there'll, it'll be a lot of stuff like here, and then there's going to be ways to... The main mechanic is that after you use a unit, they kind of get tired, so there's going to be ways to kind of rest them up, and then you can kind of give them a resting bonus so you can use them sooner, and you can do all this other stuff, and there's a whole bunch of other things that are probably going to be related to it that I don't, I'm don't. i not going to look too into it just because I actually want to experience it myself when it happens. But yeah, that's going to be this event, Akihabara okay, Explosion. I'm ready for it. I'm always up for a tower event. They don't happen very often, and when they do, I always think that they're a nice change of pace to the game. Because they make you use your units in a way you probably don't ever use them, typically. Like, you can't do the traditional, just like, uh... 
the return loop and then you're done. It doesn't really work that way <laughs> because you're going to lose those units immediately and then you'd have to wait many hours to do it. But yep, that's going to be this event and that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. I wish you all the best. As always, I, I really need to get back into making more videos. I've just been so tired from doing work and doing all this other stuff that and the work has also just been so crazy busy i haven't been able to do it as much as i wanted to um and that includes uh shonen archive as well because uh, well zen was also busy with his work so i can't do anything there but hopefully return to more videos soon but i thank you very much for watching and i thank you for the support because it means a lot to me and i'll see you guys in the next video until next time you guys have a good day and i wish you guys the best of luck with whatever summons you do especially if you're summoning on whatever the hell it's a rough ass year for summons this year if you're summoning at all i wish you the best of luck Till next time everyone goodbye